Hey, what's up everyone, Danny here. In this video, I'm going to show you a PC build that I teamed up with Micro Center to put together that will come in right around $750, and that's brand new. Uh, for this build, I wanted to step back and put together something a bit simpler when it comes to aesthetics. Uh, something a lot less flashy than the average PC being built today uh, with the whole RGB craze and all of that. Uh, but I still wanted it to perform very well at its price point, uh, so let's check it out. So let's go over all the parts. Again, I teamed up with Micro Center for this and they helped with about half of the parts, all of which can be found on their website as well as in their stores. And I'll have all that linked down below in the description. Micro Center is gonna be your one-stop shop if you're looking to build a PC, uh, whether you've built hundreds of systems in the past or if you're tackling your very first build for the very first time. Definitely hit them up for the good stuff. And by good stuff, I'm talking about their great products and their great prices. Uh, but for the rest of the unlucky folks who don't have access to Micro Center, you can build something similar using Amazon or Newhag, Newhag, <laughs> Newegg, and I'll have links to all that below as well. Uh, but let's get started with the parts. As always, we're going to start with the processor. In this price range, it's hard not to recommend going with AMD Ryzen. They absolutely deliver on the performance at their price, which is why I went with the Ryzen 5 2600 that goes for just over $100. For this build, I'm going to be overclocking, so I'm going to go with the Scythe Fuma 2. This cooler goes for $60, but every single review that you'll see on it online will show that it comes to within a couple of degrees against coolers that are in the $100 price range, and it stays just as quiet as them as well. Now, this cooler is not completely mandatory for this build. You can run at stock speeds, or if you want even like a mild overclock, using the stock AMD cooler if you want to save yourself some money. But I use that Wraith Stealth Cooler that comes in the box all the time and I wanted to change it up a little bit with this build. The motherboard I'm using is the RS B450M. It's a micro ATX board that comes in at $85. Although we're going to be using a Ryzen 2600 with this, it comes ready with the BIOS that supports Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. So down the line, it'll make it very simple to upgrade processors. And if you wait long enough for when the Ryzen 4000 series processors are out, I'm willing to bet that this board will support those as well with a quick BIOS update. The graphics card in this build is the AMD RX 5700 from XFX. This has a single fan blower design, which isn't the most ideal of cooling solutions, but it comes in right at $300, making it around $30 or 10% cheaper than the other multi-fan cards. In the past, I haven't really used that many blower style cards because they kind of have a bad rap for running loud and hot. Um, but I've always loved their aesthetics, and the good thing about this card is that it turns out it's not too hot or loud at all. Um, AMD actually locked the core and memory clocks on the RX 5700, so out of the box you can't just simply open up a program like Afterburner to overclock it. Uh, this is very easy to bypass though, and I'll talk about that more later on in the video, uh, because I ended up running it at the same clocks as a stock 5700 XT, a little bit higher actually. It didn't overheat and it didn't throttle and it wasn't unbearably loud either, uh, like how people tend to exaggerate these blower style coolers. For memory, I'm using 16 gigabytes of HyperX Furies in a two x eight configuration. These are 3200 MHz CL16. I chose them because they look pretty low key and they were cheaper than the plain black Corsair Vengeance at the time. But honestly, you can go with almost any brand of RAM that you want. I tend to go with what's priced the best at the moment in time. Just go for as high as frequencies that you can while it still fits within your budget. At the moment, I've been noticing that you know, around 3000 to 3200 megahertz is pretty much the sweet spot when it comes to price and performance, and that's gonna come in at around $70. For storage, I'm using an Inland Professional 480 gigabyte SSD. This is a two and a half inch data drive, which is plenty fast when it comes to boot speeds and loading games or programs. Going for an M.2 NVMe drive would have provided higher speeds and it would have decluttered the cable management a bit. You can go either way. Uh, two and a half inch isn't obsolete by any means. So you can save the 10 or 15 by going with that or you can get the higher uh, read and write speeds with NVMe. Um, it's just up to you. For the power supply, I'm using the EVGA 600 watt 80 plus white label. Uh, these are one of the most affordable brand new power supplies available, coming in at only $35 when it's on sale at Best Buy, which occurs fairly often. I use these a lot and I've never had a problem with them failing prematurely. All the ones I've used are still out there and going strong, both the brand new ones as well as the refurbished ones I've bought directly from EVGA. I really like buying these because they come from a company that has one of the best reputations, if not the best reputations, uh, when it comes to how they deal with replacements and warranties. So should anything go wrong, EVGA will take care of you. While this unit is considered a budget unit, it has all the standard features that you would look for in a modern power supply, such as over voltage, under voltage, over current, over power, over temperature, and short circuit protection. The one unfortunate thing about this power supply though, and it's not even like 
a feature related thing or like a performance related thing it is the 24 pin connector it has the worst ketchup and mustard going on that thing looks hideous why couldn't they just wrap it up or just use black cables um, but at $35 for a 600 watt unit that does not completely suck uh, from a company that has a great warranty uh, it's really hard to complain about it last is the case and I'm using the Montec flyer Montec is a relatively new brand in the PC space. They've been around in the Asian market for a few years, but only recently became available in the US. This is a fairly straightforward micro ATX tower with a single RGB LED strip on the front. The LED strip cannot be connected to the motherboard. It is controlled completely by a button at the top of the case, which cycles through many different presets. Uh, for this build, I ended up leaving it at a static white color though, because again, I'm going for the opposite of flashy here, just plain and simple. The biggest downside of this case, in my opinion, is this acrylic side panel. Acrylic is a pretty outdated material. It just scratches and scuffs way easier than tempered glass, so it's not ideal. But to top it off, if you look at the images on their product page, it shows a smoked gray that you can still see through just fine, but that's not what it's actually like when you put it on the PC. This panel is practically 95% blacked out, so you can't see any of the internals. That's really the only complaint I have with the case though, because aside from that, it had really good cable management, there's plenty of room behind the motherboard to fit all your cables, and the cutouts are placed really well to route the cables exactly where they need to go. This also comes with two fans pre-installed, both of which are fairly quiet and move plenty of air despite not being a mesh front panel. So this case has a lot going for it at the very competitively priced MSRP of $45, but I'd like it even more if Montec could just like slap a tempered glass side panel and decrease that tint, and I'd be okay with them adding like another 10 or 15 dollars for that um, but the acrylic just kind of has to go so in summary here's a quick look at the complete build and price breakdown and the entire build comes in right under the 750 dollars price point if you take into consideration the awesome micro center cpu motherboard combo discount if you don't have a micro center near you however and you're buying these parts elsewhere without that combo discount you can still easily hit that price target by simply using the included stock amd cooler and foregoing on the bp scythe cooler uh, doing this you still have a very capable system the ryzen 2600 at stock settings still has pretty respectable boost speeds and is still a very solid choice for gaming and now let's talk about overclocking i was able to get the ryzen 2600 to 4.1 gigahertz at 1.34 volts and at these settings during an extended stability test at full load the processor was floating in the low 70 degrees range but during gaming it's never fully utilized like that and the processor mostly stayed around 50 degrees or cooler the memory is running at the rated 3200 MHz per the AMD memory profile and the graphics card was running at 2 GHz on the core up from the locked 1850 MHz it shipped at and 1900 MHz on the memory. Overclocking the RX 5700 was very simple. I just followed a quick guide from Igor's lab that uses a tool to modify the power tables to mimic that of the RX 5700 XT. The tool does all the work for you. All you need to do is feed it an RX 5700 XT BIOS which can be found on a website like Tech Power Up, and that's it. It allows you to overclock with ease afterwards. I'll leave links for more information on this in the description. For the benchmarks, I tested the typical suite of synthetics that I normally do, uh, and for the games, I tested in both 1080p and 1440p. Uh, the settings that I used were to my own discretion to get a good balance of like graphics quality and smooth gameplay, but you can always change them if you're seeking either higher frame rates or better visuals. Um, it's just that one will usually come at the cost of the other. Um, but yeah, here are the benchmarks.
Based on the results of those benchmarks, at the price that this system goes for completely brand new, I'd say right now is such a good time to build a PC. If you've ever had any hesitations about the used market, then you don't have to worry about it anymore because you can just buy brand new and pretty much be worry free because you're going to have all the return periods and warranties still intact and you can still feel like you're getting a lot of value out of your hard earned money. This wasn't always the case though because building brand new we've had some pretty rough patches within the last few years uh, but hopefully the trend continues for the better like we've been seeing in this last year. Um, but yeah that's gonna wrap it up for this video though I want to thank Micro Center for being a huge help in making this build possible and of course I want to thank you all as always uh, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know your thoughts on it uh, down in the comments below and I will see you down there as well as in the next video. Bye.